guys, I'm Rebecca Robeson with Robeson Design in San Diego, California. And today I am going to show you the last, it's the third of three videos on our Denver Loft project. Oh, it's a hug too. Oh, I think you just adjusted my back. Yeah. Today it's gonna go way deep and I'm gonna show you the stuff I'm excited about. So this is what I call saving the best for last. The first thing out of 10 is I'm gonna to talk to you about how we had to do faux finishing. She would like to have this fixture okay. go away. We flew in Nicole. You guys have seen Nicole in a bunch of my projects. Take a look at the before pictures. Do you see what I see? Well, what comes screaming out at me is those white AC vents. If I'm gonna put brick on the walls, look at this, the brick is going on and it looks amazing. And they're gonna put that white vent cover back on there? I don't think so. And this whole faux finish them to look like a dark metal. Another error we had to address, and we did talk about this in the very first video, was the front door. So as you know, I changed all the doors in this place. Once we changed them out to this really dark stained walnut door, well, could I have ordered a brand new entry door? Of course I could have, except the CCNRs don't let you do that. Every door in the hallway has to look consistent and the same on this side. And now for the master bedroom. Once we added the reclaimed barn wood to the master bedroom wall, there were speakers that had to be there because hello, there's a television there. Well, Nicole faux finished those. We did faux finish it to look just like the wood and you cannot tell the difference. And on the opposite wall where we have the reclaimed wood, I ordered these amazing oval mirrors to go above the nightstands, giving me symmetry on that wall. It looked incredible, except when they got there, they were so screaming gold, it was ridiculous. I didn't want to get rid of all the gold, but I had Nicole add a silver rim all the way around the inside to just tone it down a little bit. Do you love the mirrors? Yes, restoration hardware. Now these came all in gold, and I actually took the mounting brackets on the top that are supposed to be gold, and I had them painted out to be a metallic bronze color. In a few minutes, I'm gonna address some of the lighting in the living room, dining room, entry area. But one of the things that we faux finished was the plate that the lights went on. So this is just a primer, and after this, we'll go over it with blacks and browns and metallics. And by we, I mean me. Number two was the hallway. How do you make a hallway look and feel bigger? Take a look at these, this before picture. Now this hallway is a little over four feet wide. Not wide enough, in my opinion, for a piece of furniture. Not only are those doors consistent and beautiful, but those mirrors down that hallway just set the perfect entryway. Once you get down the hallway, the entryway, it is a bunch of different spaces, basically, a lot of different functions within this very big open concept space. In that great room area, what do you have? The living room, the dining room, the kitchen, and the lounge. But those main areas of the great room needed to be connected. I was shopping, and uh, Jason went with me a lot from my shopping trips, and. Lauren went with me over and over again, six times to Denver for the whole construction aspect. During the shopping, I would come across things that I loved. This light fixture, oh my gosh. And I said, this is exactly what I need for the end of the hallway in front of that piece of wood and watch the second video to see what I'm talking about. From that entryway pendant, my eye is going to see on into the dining room and it's gonna see on into the living room. So as I take a look here, my view from one end of this long room to the other. Do you know how many light fixtures I'm gonna see at the same time? These had to not only be compatible, but not the same, but they also had to not fight with each other or steal the show. 
So I loved the pendant that I put in the entryway. And then, oh my gosh, we're shopping and I come along this 72 inch round. It's bigger than me, but super flat. And let me just say, getting it in the loft was nothing short of a miracle. So now I looked at the pendant light and I looked at this round disc light, I'll call it the disc light. I'm like, these, can, these guys get along. Now I need to find something to go over the dining room table. So I looked at all these other light fixtures out there and I saw this one. And then I saw this one. And I, my mind was like trying to make it all work. And then there was a ring. Jason and I were up there shopping together and we came across this thing and I'm telling you what, we thought it was the bomb diggity. Okay, no one says that anymore, but you know what I mean. Didn't they all think that was the coolest thing ever? That is cool. Ah, oh, look at him. My last challenge was, what do I put down the hallway? And I thought, these are amazing. They've got the gold finish and they have like an oil rub bronze effect to it with this really rustic chain that was so cool. So those four light fixtures helped connect the spaces, not fight with each other, but look absolutely amazing. So now here's another challenge. You've got a living space, you need a rug there. You got a dining room space, you probably need a rug there. And you have the lounge space, you need a rug there. Am I gonna put three rectangles in a row? So here's what I decided to do with the rugs. The colors had to connect. I, I've already picked out my hardwood floors. I know that the color scheme is gonna have a lot of gray and neutrals in it. So here's what I did with the rugs. Underneath of the dining room rug, this picture shows a bamboo silk rug that is gray, has a nice big kind of chunky naughtiness through it with a gold running through it. What does that do? The gold ties in beautifully with my light fixtures. But what did I do down where the lounge area was? I decided I didn't want another rectangular rug. So underneath the lounge area, in order to get more of an organic shape, I used animal shaped rugs. Three of them stacked on top of each other where I could manipulate the direction that tied in the other two gray rugs, the gray and gold, the gold in my light fixtures, and even the white in my window treatment. I looked around for a lot of different coffee tables and I ended up with this. It's actually not a coffee table. It's actually four individual leather covered benches pushed together. The plan was to use these benches to group together to make this very large oversized coffee table that could be pulled apart and used as additional seating or for putting your feet up on. I will stand here so that this does not move. As long as you attach, you guys attach to me, we are good. Number five, I call this my pillow challenge. So what I think this living room needs is color. I love that pillow. So I'm gonna take that pillow when I go shopping and I'm gonna find colors that go with it. On one of my earlier trips to Denver, I came across in this really cool little boutique a special pillow. And what I loved about it was it was a sort of a patchwork of different fabrics. Turns out it was the hero pillow for the entire living room. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you haven't been part of the design sessions. Recently, we had a, a design session specifically related to nothing but pillows. So if you have not joined the design sessions, you really should and definitely go back and see that episode because it's amazing. I took my hero pillow and I went shopping and this is all like last minute running around Denver trying to find pillows. Just to get the colors right of what, not only what looked good in the store, but what actually looked good on the sofa in the lighting of that particular room. You know, it's a mile high up there, by the way. Did you know that? I think it changes the lighting just a little bit. Number six, I'm just throwing this in because I think this is a cool thing for you guys to know about. Uh, in this particular project, I actually purchased everything. And when I say everything, I mean the ironing board, the mattress pads, the pillowcases, the towels, 
the kitchen towels. Well, just about everything. And you know what that included? The dishes. But I knew that if I had all these different combinations, but I didn't explain it to my client, she would look at her cupboards and go, oh, that's pretty, I wonder what that goes with, and maybe not come up with the same combinations that I would. So I put together four different looks that she could take these plates and come up with four completely different looks depending on how she was gonna entertain. So I left her with a binder, a leave behind of each one of these pictures. Okay, this video could be a very long video and I apologize now, mostly to my editor. See you guys. But I gotta tell you the story of the Blue Room. Faith, question. Yes. Do you make your bed every day? Uh, no. Okay, well, at least we got an honest answer. When I made my presentation for what the blue room could look like, the client said, oh, the girl that's going to be staying in that room, it's not one of their daughters, it's a, a friend, she's going to be living there. She wants to bring her own furniture. I said, oh, okay. How about if I do, I'll do the area rug, I'll paint the walls, I'll do the art and the accessories, I'll get some lamps. And I kind of threw in some bedding, which I don't know that they fully knew I was gonna do, but I did, because what's the worst thing could happen? I just have to return it. I bought all this stuff, and we kept saying, hey, could you have the girlfriend send a picture of what her furniture looks like so we'll know what to anticipate. Four days before the reveal on our 10-day install, we get a picture and it looks like that. No headboard, no footboard, no nightstands. Well, there is that little one there, but that's not really a nightstand. And I bought a pair of lamps, really nice lamps, and I bought all those mirrors to go up on the wall, and there's no headboard. I was like freaking out. At the very least, I have to have nightstands because I have two lamps, and the little tiny brown thing that she thought was a nightstand wasn't gonna cut it. My lamp would have taken up the entire nightstand, let me put it that way. Let's make this castle to a room. Three days before the clients are gonna walk in and see this home. And we did, we pulled off a miracle. Let me just say, I thought I was gonna to have to like give my firstborn child to the manager at West Elm because he was not letting me take anything off the floor. All of a sudden, he looks at his computer after we've been talking for 20 minutes and says, oh my gosh, are you talking about this one? And I said, yeah. And he goes, we actually have two of them downstairs. They don't even have a warehouse in this showroom. This is the kind of stuff you would never know. Okay, we got the nightstand thing taken care of, but what about the headboard? I've got these mirrors on the wall and a very low platform bed. I had ordered some floor cushions. You know what I mean, like big throw pillows that you put on the floor and people sit on? These were 30 by 30 and they were white and hairy. <laughs> Those two cushions went right on top of the bed and sure enough, they were the height that we needed. Castle. I'm sorry, I, I really, I hate to do this because it's not very humble, but I am patting myself on the back. There's so many things that we used in this project that were creative solutions to problems. Remember the purple room? I love that. Remember the color is shadow. It was Benjamin Moore's color of the year last year. I decided, you know what? If I really want to make that purple wall be amazing, why not put a light fixture against it that could actually act as art? Well, the challenge was the ceilings are concrete, and they had all those air conditioning and heating ducts and I don't know, plumbing, all kinds of stuff up in there. And where I wanted to hang a light fixture, there was one of those big round tubes. So I had to search high and low to find just the right fixture that would drop the length I needed it to. Now let me just say, this fixture I picked is actually six feet tall but it had white like shades on it. I thought that against the purple wall would look so amazing. If 
I'm gonna do a light on one side, the room is not very wide. I need to actually have, I think another, another light on the other side. And there was not enough room for a nightstand on that side. It took forever for me to find a floor lamp that I thought would not compete. Again, it's that competing light thing that wouldn't compete with a hanging pendant. So it's got silver arms, right? Which is kind of sim similar to my pendant. And it had like these white cone shades, which is similar to the shades on the thing. Are you following? One of the highlights in the master bedroom to me was the custom furniture that we had done. So a lot of people ask me, how do you come up with these ideas? How do you do this? Well, one of the things that really helps me is I do all of my design work in a 3D model. I use SketchUp Pro. In SketchUp, you can do a scaled model and see what something's gonna look like. So here's what happens. Most of the time, I don't buy ready-made things. Why? It's just not big enough. Take, for example, this dresser. So I did this beautiful headboard, two nightstands, and a companion dresser. The dresser that I found comes 72 inches wide and 32 inches tall. You got that? That was gonna look like a puny little nothing on that 13 foot tall ceiling. The final measurement was 108 inches wide and instead of 32 inches tall, 40 inches tall. Those may be the measurements, but here's what you need to know. And I've learned this the hard way. Isn't that so cool? That's why if you're ever gonna hire a doctor or a designer, hire someone old like me, because we've made all the mistakes as we were growing up. <laughs> when you've had as many years in this business as I have, you've already done the things like this. What do you mean the sofa doesn't fit in the door? That actually happened to me once. Oh my gosh, they had to take the door jams off. I don't make those mistakes anymore. Why? Because I measure the size of the elevator, the this angle, the tight, the width, so that I know that my furniture is not gonna have to come up the fire escape to get to the top floor. And look how perfectly this fits. And number 10, aw, the last one. Well, in the master bathroom, we had an issue. I did the model and I designed it to have two sinks on the vanity and two mirrors and three sconces. I thought, oh, I'll make a sconce. I actually created this. And I'll make one arm higher than the other. And then on the other side, I'll make the other hand higher than the other. And then in the middle, I'll just make them go like this. You can find one that goes like this, and if you're lucky, they'll let you order it in the mirrored version, but nobody does that and that. We contacted the manufacturer and we said, uh, by the way, do you make a left and a right? Yes, we do. Oh, good. Do you make a center? What's a center? A center is where they're actually the same. And they said, not usually. And they said, well, we only have a few more weeks left, but could you work on that? And sure enough, Leave me a comment below and let me know if you like the sconces because I think they're pretty fabulous. So that concludes my tour of the kind of the top 10 creative things that I can think of that we did in this project that were more furniture and lighting related. This has been super fun for me and we've made much longer videos than we normally do because you guys have been interested in all the details. I hope you found some things in this video that you can use in your own home. That's what it's really all about, right? All right, if you haven't seen the other two videos, the first one is the actual reveal of this whole space. It's amazing, it's amazing. And also the second one where I go into the construction details. I talk more about the brick and the tile and the floor and the granite and the backsplashes, things like that. All right, so that's it for me and for you guys. I look forward to seeing you next time here at Ropes and Design. And don't forget, become a member of the design sessions and you can see me a lot more often. All right, I've said enough. Okay, we're out. See ya. Bye. Okay, now, the question is, how does Becky get out of here? <laughs>